Welcome to the LZX Industries Primer on Analog Video. Our goal with this video is to establish a basic familiarity with the analog video signal and its component parts. Digital video is composed of a sequence of still images known as frames. Each frame is a two-dimensional grid of colored pixels. When we manipulate and display digital images, we are dealing with an entire picture all at once. In this respect, digital video is most analogous to the individual exposures in a strip of film. The analog video signal is more analogous to an audio signal. It is a continuously flowing intensity across time. When an analog signal controls the electron beam of a television, the resulting fluctuations in light are perceived by our eyes as a moving image. The value of an analog signal is measured in volts. Voltage is measured across time, and the speed at which voltage changes is known as the signal's frequency. But we are missing some pieces of the puzzle. The television needs more information to know when to sweep the beam across the display and when to return the beam to its starting position. This information is given to the television in the form of video sync pulses. Let's take a closer look at the video signal by transforming this sine wave into something we can display properly on a television. The basic unit of measurement in analog video is called the scan line. One scan line is defined by the time it takes the television beam to move from the left edge of the display to the right edge of the display and back again. In the case of this sine wave, we see multiple repetitions, so that means the sine wave's frequency is faster than the scan line rate. The first processing step we need to perform is black level clipping. Next, we do the same thing with our white level. Voltages outside of this brightness range may cause the display to malfunction. Finally, we are going to add a sync pulse to the beginning of our scan line. This pulse will tell the television that a new scan line has begun. In the LZX Modular Video Synthesizer, the Color Video Encoder module performs all of these conditioning operations behind the scenes. The video output of this module is always valid video, which can be displayed and recorded. Now that we have a proper video scan line, let's see how it is displayed. Only a portion of the video signal is viewable on the display. The horizontal blanking interval is outside this active video area. There are 45 blank scan lines which are not displayed in the active video area. Let's look at the first active video scan line. The electron beam of the television starts on the left and moves to the right. The brightness of the beam changes in response to the voltage level of the video signal. At the end of each scan line, the horizontal sync pulse instructs the display to turn off the beam and move it back to the left side of the display. There are 480 active scan lines in each video frame. The total number of active scan lines is known as the video's vertical resolution. Horizontal resolution is not determined by discrete units like scan lines or pixels, but instead by the bandwidth of the analog system. For each complete frame, there are two interlaced fields displayed one after the other. The first field is the odd field because it contains all of the odd numbered scan lines. The second field is the even field. In between the active scan lines of each field, we have vertical sync or the field rate. This signal instructs the display to turn off the beam and return to the top of the display. There is a final sync signal we'll discuss in this video, and that is the odd even gate, or the frame rate clock. The frame rate frequency is roughly 30 frames per second. Let's review our other two video sync signals in relation to the frame rate's timeline. Next is the vertical sync pulse, or field rate. This pulse instructs the display to return to the top in order to display a new field. Finally, we have our horizontal sync pulse, or line rate. This pulse instructs the display to return to the left in order to display a new scan line. Don't be overwhelmed by trying to memorize any of these exact numbers or frequencies. The most important concept is to understand what these signals do and how they relate to each other in time.